All right. Thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, we are uh, doing connectivity chat, how Digi International built an IoT empire. Uh, I'm joined with uh, two awesome guests. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Matt McKinney, I am the partner engagement manager supporting the uh, RCN family uh, with Digi. So I'm basically the, uh, the coordinator between RCN and, and Digi International. I'm Tommy Shannon. I'm director of our channel and resale partner program. Awesome. And I'm Mark Delicato, host for today and content marketing specialist here at RCN uh, Technologies. How are you guys doing today? Great. Awesome. Good. Good day okay. with the team. For sure. Yeah. Have you guys been here before? First time. First time. Awesome. Yeah. First time in Knoxville. First time to this beautiful okay. office you guys have here. So. What's uh, impressions? Any, any good takeaways? I'd say uh, one word that comes to mind is family. Not just because a lot of people are married, but <laughs> because everybody <laughs> just feel, feels like a big, happy family here. You know, even at lunch today, you know, we had an opportunity to, to break bread with the team and mm -hmm. it really had a family feel. Everybody sat together. It wasn't, it wasn't clicky. Everybody was like friends and friendly yeah. and very welcoming and uh, just exuded that, that Southern hospitality. So really, really great atmosphere you guys have built here. I agree. And, and, and also what struck me is um, how progressive the company is with their approach and being on the leading edge, right? So we're mm -hmm. all in IoT, we're all in the technology group. Um, and sometimes you can get stayed in that, right? And just go with what's working. And what I've seen across the board, leadership down and um, from the floor up, literally here, mm -hmm. is that everybody's coming with new ideas right. that we've spurned today. And it just, you seem to carry on with this evolution, which is pivotal to success in this market. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Glad to hear it. Uh, Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, well, I'm excited to, uh, to get into this. We've got a, a couple of different questions here. Uh, Jackie, if you don't care to uh, pop the first one out there for us. And while she's doing that, let's see. Um, I actually have the first one here. So uh, for those who don't know, and this was actually me even a, uh, a day or two ago, what all does Digi do? I know you guys have routers, uh, do a lot of, you know, failover type things, but Digi is so much more than that, right? So can you guys talk to that? Yes, I mean, uh, I think the better question is what do we not do, right? Yeah. So in, in the IoT space, we, we, we've kind of been a pioneer. We've been around since 1985. Mm -hmm. uh, really got our start in the component side of the business. So the right. you know the first Digi product that was that was released was a Digi board, you know, analog board that went inside of something to make it do something. Mm -hmm. And then you know we kind of went from there, uh, very very analog up until the early 2000s. Then everything started going digital. So we kind of pivoted our company. To get more into the IoT space from a digital side, but we still have a very big core business in the uh, the, the components and, and that side of the business. But you know, as Tommy and I have come on board, uh, our biggest focus, at least with our business unit, is um, cellular cellular routers, cellular connectivity. So making sure anything that has wheels, anything that is a, a retail establishment, really anything that needs internet, we we want to be able to provide a solution to ensure that internet. You know, it's up and running, and if it goes down, we have protection for that as well. So yeah, it's awesome. Anything to add to that? Um, outside, uh, you know, of that, it's again what we're known for is you know boxes, right? Mm -hmm. um, but our mission, right, and what we really do is solve problems, okay. right, yeah. and give the customers through our channel mm -hmm. solutions to those problems. So right. we like RCN are always looking for the best fit, the right fit, the mm -hmm. right solution rather than the feed, the speed, or the ports, mm -hmm. right? So that's really what we do is we evolve and we yeah. try to drive this evolution. That's awesome. I think it's one of the reasons why we have such a great partnership. Like, as, as you just said, you know, that's uh, very in line with RCN's model as well. And, uh, you know, I've been working here since February and kind of makes me proud to work here, right? You know, yeah. it's not one of those it's just quick pump and dump kind of, right. you know, get it out. But uh, that's awesome. Um, okay, so uh, next question. Um, Let's see, I'm actually not sure. What do we have next, Jackie? What is your role? Awesome. What is your role? So what do you guys do for, for Digi? I know you kind of... Yeah, yeah. So, you know, essentially my, my main uh, objective is, you know, make Digi an easy OEM partner to deal with in the channel. So, mm -hmm. you know, in the past, we didn't have as much dedicated resources to our channel partners like RCN, but uh, we spun up a new team under the leadership of this fellow right here back in October where we really just dedicated our team and our, our goal to making Digi a, the, one of the easiest OEM partners in, in the space to do business with. Mm -hmm. And I think we're really starting to see a lot of that come through just with the engagements we're having with, with your team. Uh, the fact that we can walk up and down the stairs and everybody knows us just from, you know, the, the brief in, encounters we've had thus far. But you know, really, I think that's that's my main goal is and, and role, if you will, 
is to be that conduit between RCN and Digi to ensure, you know, the, the sales team, the technical teams, every everybody within the organization of RCN knows how to and feels confident in procuring Digi hardware, where it be from, you know, a, a hardware standpoint, a services standpoint, or really just a technical aspect. There's a lot of times we'll jump on a call where, you know, maybe we're not the best fit, but we still want to support you as a partner, right. even if we're not the best fit. But hopefully we're, we're the best fit most times. But um, you know, if we're not, we'll, we'll tell you that. But my yeah. role is to kind of help align those stars as it relates to the relationship with RCN and Digi and, and whatever this guy tells me to do. <laughs> <laughs> my role is to tell him what to do. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Frankly, you know, my role, again, is out there to uh, be out there in the market, be accessible, have my ear to the proverbial railroad, right, mm -hmm. and understand what's coming and what partners can help us succeed in that and how we can then enable them to go to market and deliver to those demands of the market right again yeah. so really my you know my role is to um provide access to all that we can offer mm -hmm. in a way that the partner can maximize end results for their end customer right so yeah. you can do more with what you need to do right so if you need to know what's going on you're the one that that you go to yeah i mean essentially right yeah. my team mm -hmm. like building that team and then making sure that Digi again is in tune with the market so right. that we're ahead of the game a bit rather than being reactive. Okay. Awesome. Some would say expect more. Yeah. <laughs> just just something I've heard a few times today. But yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, so this one, I'm actually I want to get your uh, answer first. So what are your thoughts or predictions for 5G? Um, obviously being an IoT company, having you know so many different areas that you guys uh, touch, um, and having you know your ear to the ground, what uh, What's IT or 5G looking like for IoT? Um, so this is a very nebulous question, yeah, right? And course. it's the question of the day, right? So I'm, I'm I've made some notes. That's okay. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about really like I see and Digi approaches it that 5G is really if you've been in this IoT space, mm -hmm. you've been in the connectivity space. There's never it's not a destination. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. Yeah. So. I started when it was um, analog. Right. Oh, oh it was smoke signals really. from, yeah. from the whole <laughs> smoke signals. We go way back. Um, analog to then digi, you mm -hmm. know, and when I say this, we used to call it digital phones digi. Hey, you got your digital. Oh. Like it was a thing, right? Yeah. And it, coming from this industry in the early 90s, right? And now we've seen the, the CDMA and then 2G, yeah. and 3G, we're at 4G, right? We just retired 2G. So yeah. think about this, right? And now we're on our third sunset mm -hmm. of 3G. Right. Still can't get this thing off the planet, right? Mm -hmm. So 5G is just that next iteration, right? Right. So again, it's a path, right? So what we're looking into that is how do we address that? How right. do we ready our customers for that? How do we, in, again, engage and enable and set the right expectations? Because mm -hmm. with this new technology, what is the application? Right. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. not, this isn't an Instagram race to have the new Nikes, right? It, it, yeah. it's, it's not that. And if you're approaching it that way and it's the greatest and latest, so I need it, mm -hmm. you're either going to be sorely disappointed, your CFO is going to be disappointed because right. it's an investment. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a strategy of how to transition, you're not going to find the value on it. Right, you want right. So again, you want the right partner mm -hmm. with the right OEM supplier to help you walk through that journey because there'll be another thing. Yeah. So we have to make sure that we're doing our due diligence to understand what the start, middle, end, and or next evolution of that journey is. Right. So that's that's what I'll say. And okay. again, we can talk feeds and speeds and all that, but I think, mm -hmm. frankly, I think it's premature. We right. need to understand as a triumvirate or a bigger group of what is the need, what is the use case, what is the budget, mm -hmm. and then how do we address it over that time. Right. And I think Digi is in a unique, unique, unique space in that we have the ability to help that customer uh, future proof themselves so they can have access to 5G when 5G becomes more readily available because you know 5G is a big buzzword. There's a lot of investment in 5G, but the network is just it's not quite there yet from a widespread um, 
perspective. But something that's unique about Digi is uh, we, we take a core module approach where we have uh, plug-in modules. So let's say a customer you know, has their, their eyes set on 5G, but maybe it's not available in, in mass where they, where they have their deployments. Well, we could set them up with something that's current today, you know, 4G LTE device. But the great thing about a lot of the Digi devices, it, it accepts that core plug-in module. So, you know, a year down the road, two years down the road, when 5G is a lot more relevant, prevalent out in the market and the cost comes down, because that's the other big part, right? Mm -hmm. Cost is a big part of 5G. Instead of ripping and replacing their whole device and their whole network, if you've ever played Super Nintendo and you can take a cartridge out and blow on and put it back in there, you can upgrade your device to a 5G module. So I think that's a big thing that, that we try to leverage a lot with, with our product line is, you know, 5G is going to be there, you know, a year, five years, 10 years from now. It's just we're on, to Tommy's point, we're on the early, the early stages of it where, you know, it's not um, as widespread as 4G or, or you know, even 3G right. for that matter. But we, we're in a, a really good space and a good spot from an OEM standpoint to help the customer uh, take that journey, as, as, as Tommy uh, mentioned. So it's, again, it's not a destination; it's a journey. And let us get you, you know, set up now. And then when that five G becomes, you know, more of a play for you, right. then you're already kind of, you know, two steps ahead of the game. So yeah. And what what makes us somewhat unique, I think, in our approach, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's not really a change for us. We've foreseen this whole thing. Is right. If you're going to take the journey. You need to be in the right vessel. Right. So again, we have transit. Traffic, rail specific, TX64, 5G and 5G rail specifically coming out. Right. We'll launch first here within the next 30 to 60 days with live devices in hand from our EX50 mm -hmm. 5G enterprise line. So again, you've got to have the right solution every time. Right. I think you might have heard that before, mm -hmm. right? But it, it is truly imperative to your journey because right. if you're stuck in the Steerage, mm. we all remember Titanic. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And, and another thing I'll say is that on this journey, right, or if you're picking 5G and that's your main plate, you need, make sure that you have your second course or whatever, right? Meaning right. we also have a very keen focus on private LTE and CBRS mm -hmm. as you move forward because you're going to need that. Right. If you really have a heavy solution, everybody thinks that it's faster, no latency, and it's a bigger pipeline. But by the way, it's not going to be here right. in the next year. Like mm -hmm. 4G will be here for a generation. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So the same, we're all predicting, and this 5G is going to be the end all be all, but truly, you're going to have some of the same constraints, mm -hmm. right? Yep. If you look at it, you've got repeater antennas up on your own roof currently right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, that reminds me a little bit of rabbit ears, yeah. right? And now we evolve. Now, now your phone is a or your um, TV is probably a Roku, yeah, right? And now we're not connected. We don't even have cable. So, you not again. You have to prepare yourself for that. So that's another thing where Digi is very focused on is the certification and availability and going with dual modules for doing all your stuff on this private network that you used to do, right? If you don't want to pay for that carrier. And then here's what you do for mission critical 5G stuff. Yeah. Think about that, right? So when you talk 5G, it's not in fact. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that I find so fascinating about uh, your guys' products, too. Um, when you guys were giving that uh, presentation earlier at the Lunch and Learn, uh, which there's pictures on social media if you're interested. Um, but uh, one of our guys was taking taking that module out and looking at it. And that's just that's fascinating, right? Mm -hmm. Just from the, you know, okay, just upgradeability of like, uh, changing your tires instead of buying a whole new car every time they upgrade, right? So I thought, yeah, uh, especially with 5G being so new, like you were saying, and really not knowing where it's going to go, kind of getting a good baseline, making sure you have the right product to, from the get-go, I think that's super important. Absolutely. Cool. Um, the next question here. Uh, oh, what's your favorite Digi product? Uh, I'll say it's easy. Digi yeah. Remote Manager. Okay. So, um, again, it, it kind of is a glue that makes it all come together, right? Mm -hmm. if, if we're selling on price, if we're selling on feeds and speeds, right? Yeah. There's, it, it, it doesn't really relate to the customer's why mm -hmm. and what the value is. Right? Yeah. So what you need to do is the control, the management, the access, the data mm -hmm. that you can either take 
from or provide to your customers right. to again maximize your go to market, your services, right, and or theirs. Right. So, you know, the fact that it's on the digital side, it's optional, you can add it. You yeah. have one, three, five year, you know, um, service models, right? It, it, it allows us to go from those who must have been in that market for a long time and it was typical like you're getting a little kick from the carrier, right? And you're hoping you're getting some margin. Well, now I can arm you to become a manager to have your own managed network mm -hmm. with your own software as a service platform with reoccurring revenue, but more importantly, you get deeper and wider within that time. So for right. me, again, I go into all of these customer partner engagements Someone as a toddler, right? Yeah. And I'll have to go in there and ask, why? Why, Dad? Well, the sun goes up and then it comes back. Well, why? Well, here's other ways to critical track. Well, why? And then why? You give them your five whys with your, your customer or your partner. And then you turn into that insulin teenager and you say, well, who cares? Yeah. Right? Like, who cares? But I don't mean it that way. I mean, like, who cares in your organization? Right. It's probably not the IT pushing your talk to you. They don't probably have any budget. The guy or the lady or whoever. That has the budget is the one who cares. Right. And what they want out of you isn't fees and speeds. It's safety, security, reliability, yep. repeatable performance of my network for these reasons for these customers of mine. Mm -hmm. So if you can deliver that, it doesn't matter what box is on the end. And that's why I think for us, DJA no managers and our service platform is my favorite product. I have to agree with Tommy. I mean, I think it really is the workhorse behind all of our products. I think, you know, a lot of folks will say a router is a router is a router is a router. And I mean, I think that's been used a lot. But at the end of the day, it really is, you know, the engine, the, you know, the, the box is the Ferrari, but the engine is the DRM, is your manager behind it. But I would say device specific, I would, I would probably lean towards the uh, TX64, just because not only is it a world class, you know, amazing device, but if you're walking down a dark alley and, and somebody tries to jump you, it's also very heavy. You can use it as a weapon. So uh, <laughs> I think that's that's probably my favorite. I will say I saw that on the yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Exactly. Well, due, due to liability reasons, we can't actually put that. But yeah. wait, right. wait, you can throw it at somebody; it'll hurt them. So and also, Matt's not kidding. He said he has to agree with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Contractually, I have to. Yeah. 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 I'll be, I'll be honest. I don't know a ton about the uh, the remote manager. I need to read up on it some more. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm a data nerd for sure. So yeah. I, 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 well, that's, we that's top we can data dump a bunch of stuff around and keep you busy for weeks. But yeah. uh, I mean, but are we jump on calls with you, your partners, you know, the, the RC and team to to do a more deep deep dive as well? So again, we're here as a resource to help you guys um, be a better app ambassador and advocate for Digi to your partners. So yeah, awesome. Cool. Um, so let's see, before, well, I'll go ahead and actually do that one. Uh, what can you guys tell me about the ISS project? So it, it, it was a project that happened back in 2015, and we uh, it was a partner of ours that did robotics. And um, really, as far as the, the particulars around it, um, I don't really know as high level as I probably should on that project, but what I, sure. yeah, it's, yeah. it's highly classified and, and I'd probably get in trouble if I told too much. But what I can say is Digi works in space and Digi was in space before Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and who's the other fellow? Uh, Richard Branson. Richard Branson, yeah. So we were in space before all these billionaires. So there's got to be something to that. But yeah, I mean, when you look at the, the environment of space, what gets more harsh than you know, zero gravity and, and right. space, you know, yeah. like there's, I think just that, that speaks volumes to just our, our R and D and just the, the purpose built devices that Digi has that we can work not only in, in regular gravity on earth, but we can work in zero gravity in space. Not that that's a big part of our business, but yeah. you know, it, it's something that we've improved. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what's interesting is that we have to take all this dirty polluting, mm -hmm. um, manufacturing right in, in industry what i thought he was going to say is you know if you find a better way to do it but what he said is and put it in space all right, all right so again it will be there but mm -hmm. in this project in particular it was truly you know robotics right so right. It, and it was testing it was on the international space station right so yeah. i have that the international space station right so i'm from columbus right john glenn we are the john glenn right the first in space truly right uh in in this OEM business that, that I'm aware of, 
right? Right. I haven't seen it, you know, anywhere else. And we've continued and have been back to space, right? So again, it's not really about what device was that you wanted to do. It's the fact that there was a need, right? And we were able to collect data. We were able to enforce and enhance safety protocol where we have humans living outside of our atmosphere, right? right. So it's uh, that's what I love most about our job and our industry is coming into and learning about and actually helping to evolve. I'll go back to that evolution, right? Right. Um, everything we're doing here on this planet, mm -hmm. and we are truly a global and now you know intergalactic. Intergalactic. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it, it really is fascinating. Two points on that I want to hit on real quick. Number one, it's not just going to be moving, um, you know, trash and, and things like that into space. Uh, literally, people paid for their seats. So that's already space tourism. Already right. happened. That's, that's a thing now. Um, and secondly, um, how you were saying it was a, a purpose built job, right? Uh, could you guys talk to that a little bit more? Uh, I thought it was really fascinating when you were talking about some of the, uh, the solutions earlier that uh, were purpose built for, for moving. Yeah, I'll take that, and, and Tommy can probably uh, add some more color if he needs to. But so, Digi, you know, back to kind of the evolution of us being a pioneer in the IoT space. Digi was created as an engineering company built for engineers. Right. So we, we built very technical things, and, and we sold them to very technical people, and we've evolved from that. So I think um, when I say purpose built, it, 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 we have a lot of SKUs because we we do a lot of very specific things for our customers that require very specific, um, you know, projects. So I think when we say purpose built, like if, if you come to Digi with with a you know request or requirement for a specific project, chances are we already have something that we've built that's right. going to be custom built for that. Or if not, guess what? We have uh, a whole team of engineers, um, web design services that you can actually, you know, it's, it's a service we offer if you're trying to build something yourself. Um, where we can purpose build something specifically for you if we don't already have something off the shelf. Right. Yeah. So. There are wireless design services, and again, our professional services, and frankly, just our cadre of sales engineers, right? right. Digi always asks, are you going to build or are you going to buy? Mm -hmm. Right? And, and again, in the OEM space, we from the component space, that you can come into that a lot, right? So, But we can help from a budgeting standpoint, from a time standpoint, from a certification standpoint, again, you, are you building something you want to take to market? Right, right. We can help. We can help do that. Or if you just want to go to market or need a solution as an end customer, put what we have on the shelf. But again, to the point of purpose built in our enterprise devices, our enterprise devices are truly enterprise. They're made to look. They come with remote mounting kits so that you can find the best coverage within your building, right? Right. In the early days, there was a lot. I worked with a carrier, a mm -hmm. big red carrier. Right, and we were selling some continuity. Right, but those boxes always went in the data closet, where there's no cellular coverage, and the customer not never got what they paid for. Right, so celerity concepts that was purchased by Digi in that acquisition that that company came over. Right, they go to market with a remote mounting kit right in the box and a battery pack to walk around with your router mm -hmm. to test where you get the best coverage. Now we have it POE activated. Right. So now I can find it, right? And I always say a router's like a plant. I mean, they can get towards some light, it's going to be great. Yeah. Right? Because that's where the coverage is. So purposely, we built this aspect into this device. So now you get what you pay for. Right. You're not calling your partner back. RCN's not saying, oh, sorry, didn't know. No, it's Verizon's fault. Who am I going to call? Like, Ghostbusters, who am I going to right? We, we avoid that, right? Yeah. And again, we're not going to take an industrial router, put it into that enterprise space. Right. Now, if we need failover, or what we would normally call you know, continuity um, in a harsh environment, we're going to say, hey, different specs here. Now the spec matters because I need it to be temperature right. or I need it to be ruggedized. And again, when we go into transit, we get into rail and you need vibration certifications and specs. Right. right. So we truly look at every nuance of an opportunity um, to make sure that again our partners delivering the value and, and the best solution for that customer's needs and applications. So again might equal a lot of SKUs, but allows you to customize. Oh, yeah. 
pick the one you need. And I think too many times you kind of get um, just the quick lip service of, oh, yeah, we do that. And right. then it's like, is not the one that you sold me and I put it in the truck? And then I used to wonder, tell me to put under my counter to my POS system. Right. Maybe, maybe, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I think that really what comes down to the purpose bill, it's more about that conversation and qualifying, right? Mm -hmm. Our stuff, you do it. Right. You just tell me what needs to be done. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, awesome. Yeah, great answers to that. Thank you for uh, uh, for answering my my little tangent there off of off of the main question. Um, what's the first one that I had on that list? Do you work with MTA? Yeah, mass transit. So, what do you, what kind of stuff do you guys do? Uh, mass transit. Well, as you asked. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the sweet spots that Digi has been a, a, a huge uh, winner in and had a lot of successes. Um, so there's there's a company in sub southeastern Pennsylvania that has a transit authority. And if you put all those letters together, it would spell the name of the organization. So I'll let you do that yourself. But, you know, it's it's a great opportunity for us. I mean, I think that's the place we win a lot. We talk about transportation purpose built. I mean, we have devices purpose built, not just for trains or for um, buses. We have a purpose built for trains. We have a purpose built for vehicles. And, you know, and, and we've done it a lot. We've, we've had a lot of uh, success in that space. So, you know, if you have customers that are looking for something like that, you definitely engage with your RCN salesperson, have, have them bring us in because, you know, this, this uh, phrase is overused in our industry a lot, rinse, wash, and repeat. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's the easy button, right? I mean, yeah. we, we have uh, a lot of expertise in that area. So to answer your question, um, there, there are several different uh, transit authorities that we've worked with that um you know we can get it get more in the weeds on on that you know should should anyone have questions about it but yeah i mean i would say that's a huge part of our business is that that transportation authority area yeah and, and it's usually in that tx line that we talked about right and because with it, it allows for things like um, active active cellular right so okay. you can actually have two modems in the device mm -hmm. and dual do wi-fi okay. meaning that i can have all my mission critical all my security, all my internal systems truly running, not just um, on split tunneling or delay PN, right? Right. It's, it's another layer to say I want it diversified entirely. So I want okay. my infotainment, I want my passenger Wi-Fi, their access, give them all they need, make it a great ride, um, keep them working, yeah. right? Um, but I can have then my pay kiosk, my internal Wi-Fi, my internal systems, mm -hmm. right, all secure. Right. Right. And it, I think that's one of the big pluses in that transit um, space. And when we talk transit, I don't want to um, lose the opportunity to also talk about traffic and traffic control, intelligent okay. traffic control, right? Yeah. Because they come hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in that space, um, one of our recent wins was with a little uh, in a little city in the New York area yeah. um, <laughs> and the one. five boroughs, right? Yeah where we are in every traffic cabinet for just over 13,000. Um, yeah, at this point it's wow. approaching 14,000 um, um, traffic control intersections, mm -hmm. right? So, so if you're ever stuck in traffic in New York City, blame Digi. <laughs> if you're never, if you're ever not stuck in traffic, blame Digi. So I guess it's thank two sides, you. right? Right, thank Digi, there you go. <laughs> yes, thank you very yeah. much. But it go, it's a big, extremely, um, you know, those two things just align, right? right. Because when you're, when you're out there um, in, in uh, New York City, right, you know, we, we talk security and, and pandemic and response and it goes into, you know, kiosk and road signage and Amber mm -hmm. Alerts and all that. So again, you really want to look at all this stuff holistically as a municipality or a government agency and or a partner involved in that. And again, I think you need to have that expertise um, that an RCN has right. and be able to talk about these solutions, right? And understand the nuances of them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, we're right on time now. Um, so do you guys have any final parting words that you'd like to, to get across? Um, all you guys out there in TV land, if you like free beer, I hear this is the place to be because <laughs> that's where we're headed after this is they're going to feed us some free beer. But yeah, RCN has been great. Uh, we really appreciate you guys having us today. It's, it's been a, you know, an amazing day of meetings and, and interaction with the team. And I uh, really look forward to continuing this not um, relationship, partnership, because I think it really is a two-way street. And I think we have a lot of synergies 
both with Digi and RCN, not just the color scheme, but, you know, yeah. uh, the technology as well. So uh, really looking forward to, you know, working with you guys and, and, and all those watching out there, you know, more than happy to help you guys in any way we can too. Take advantage of the free consultation mm -hmm. and um, RCN does, yeah. does more than Digi. So take advantage of their expertise across any connectivity field is what I'll say. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for hopping on here today. Uh, I did have a couple more questions, but I'll just use that as a, a way to get you guys on next time you're in town. Perfect. Um, yeah, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Uh, and yeah, uh, looking forward to, uh, to the next one. Awesome. Great. Thanks. Well, thank you.